passport. What comes to your mind when I mention passport? Good times with family and friends? Ticket to travel the world? To most of us here, it is just a prerequisite for us to travel the world. But what happens if you don't have a passport? Globally, statistics reveal that there are at least 10 million stateless persons in the world. Being stateless means they do not have any documentation to prove who they are, including birth certificates. As a result, they could not go to school, aren't allowed to go to see doctors, apply for jobs, opening a bank account, or even legally getting married. My research looking at specifically certain group of stateless people, which is also the largest stateless group in the world, the Rohingyas originally from Myanmar, they have been collectively revoked nationality by the government in 1982, making them living precariously around the world for three to four generations now. I specifically look into the population in Malaysia, trying to understand how do they negotiate their sense of belonging uh, throughout, the process of, throughout the process of transition into adulthood as a stateless person. Malaysia, just like the other country in the Southeast Asian region, is a non-signatory to any international convention on statelessness or refugee, meaning stateless person is considered as illegal. I, through, the, through the lens of phenomenology, I explore the meaning of 1.5 generation stateless and try to understand. Oh, 1.5 generation is someone in between first and second generation who were born in their country of origin, but traveled to the new country when they were young. Growing up phase is already very stre stressful, stressful period for all, all of us, but having to do it while against the law is so much worse. Trying to understand belonging from their perspective, I am applying a um, framework by Vanessa May, which said there are four aspects of belonging, material, cultural, relational, and temporal. I'm going to start my fieldwork very soon, and I'm going to interview Rohingyas and stakeholders that, are, that has been working with them surround, uh, around the Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. Lastly, I would like to end my speech with a statement by a dear stateless person that I know. It is nice that we have all end up, come out from the COVID quarantine period. But that two years of my life was the only time that I felt belong because everyone else around the world has been speaking and feeling the same way as how I've been feeling my whole life. Thank you.